Wow, this dude was stuck in a cave for a week before being rescued. I don't know how this dude did not go slightly crazy from like anxiety or something. Now to Turkey, where an American explorer who got stuck more than 3,000 feet underground in a cave over a week ago is finally out. Ramey Innocencio reports from outside that cave. Celebration, the moment American caver Mark Dickey emerged from the earth. Dickey's ordeal started 10 days ago while helping map Turkey's Morja cave. He was hit with severe gastrointestinal bleeding and vomiting, leaving him on the edge of death, nearly two thirds of a mile underground. Rescue teams first stabilized him, giving him fluids and four liters of blood before working to bring him out. As you can see, I'm up, I'm alert, I'm talking. Uh, but I'm not healed on the inside yet, so I'm going to need a, a lot of help to get out of here. Through, I cannot imagine like having some kind of an emergency medical need while inside a wet, damp, dark cave. That is some scary stuff. Three days and nights, seven international teams of rescuers ferried him up more than 3,000 feet using no fewer than 70 rope systems. Most of the time, he was strapped to a stretcher, hooked up to an IV, and always with a medic at his side, navigating waterfalls, near freezing temperatures, and narrow passages, some widened with explosives. The final explosion on the surface of joy and welcome relief, a multinational mission finally ending in success. Wow, that's a lot of people just to bring up one, one dude from a cave, but that is that's just wild those people have some cojones uh being able to do all that while also keeping this dude alive and mark dickey will now be taking a helicopter to the nearest hospital in the town of mersin we were told the best case scenario for his rescue would be four days but maybe as much as two weeks and they rescued him in three days john Remy innocencio thank you Joining us now is National Cave Rescue Committee instructor Carlos Lau. Carlos, what's your first reaction to this kind of rescue? Well, first of all, I'm extremely happy, happy to see Mark out and that he won't be in there anymore. And I have to say that I take my hats off for the entire team that actually was in the rescue because they performed an incredible feat. I mean, this is as good as Cave Rescue was going to get. Uh, about 58 hours of straight work, 10 different countries from such a death. I mean, this was uh, incredible. When you, Mark had been down there for more than a week, from a rescuer's point of view, what went through your mind or goes through your mind when you're preparing for a rescue like this? Well, first of all, you have to remember that this was twofold, right? You had the medical condition, which had to be first stabilized, and then you had the extraction from the cave. So after stabilizing the medical condition as much as it could down there, then going through all these passages, their vertical work, everything, that just, it blows my mind how they could do it so fast. And it just was a lot of teamwork, separating the cave into the seven segments, the different teams just hand one handing them right to the other that was just precision work the dark cold confined spaces it, it's very tough work well i'm getting claustrophobic claustrophobic just asking these questions Talk, explain for those of us who have not been down in those kinds of narrow passages just what it what it feels like understand how tight the space is and also the, the normal equanimity of people who are used to being in caves, how does that change in a crisis situation? Well, you, you said it perfectly, right? Because as cavers, we're usually we're accustomed to these spaces, right? But it takes a toll when you're a patient in the rescue, right? And you're in the, in the litter, many times you're strapped down, you're passing through all these places in which you were basically an athlete going through an obstacle course and now your fate is in the hands of somebody else. It's very tight spaces. You have to remember this is absolute darkness. So you can only see so far and it just, it takes a toll on the mind. Mark is a very strong caver. He's an excellent cave instructor. He's a friend. So it, you know, it must've been very hard for him 
but I know that he put his trust in very capable people. Thank you so much, Carlos Lau, National Cave Rescue Committee instructor. Thank you for being with us and helping us understand that. Thank you for having me.